Uh, Coach, just an opening statement, just talk about uh, getting into Atlanta and, and bowl preparation so far, how things have been going for the team. It's been good. We uh, flew in yesterday morning, <clears throat> started our practice in Norman last, uh, last week, and uh, flew in yesterday morning. Excited to be here. It's a great city. It's a great, uh, you know, it's going to be a great venue to play in. <clears throat> We're excited to play LSU. Obviously, he's a, uh, a great opponent. Um, I feel like we're going to do well on Saturday and, and uh, go from there. All right, Coach. All right, for the players, uh, Jalen, we'll start with you. Talk about you know the event last night, getting into kind of some of the bowl week activities. Uh, tremendous comeback, maybe the best comeback that we've ever had in the history of our football feud. Uh, what was that event la last night like for you guys? Um, it was cool to get out there and have some fellowship with the teammates. Experienced this with these guys, and um, I think it was all cool. Yeah, great about you. Yeah, it was a it was a good time for sure. Uh, just having some uh, good times with the, you know, the team and everything like that. It was fun. Just uh, ready for Saturday. CD, what about what about touring the Hall of Fame? What did you think of uh, getting to see the Hall of Fame? <coughs> uh, I saw I got a glimpse of it uh, during the Home Depot award show, so it wasn't really much of a surprise to me. But yeah, I really enjoyed it. Cool. All right. Thanks, guys. All right. We'll go ahead and open it up for questions. Raise your hand. We'll get you a microphone. Where are we going? Back in the back. All right. All the way in the back. Microphone, please. Uh, Colin Kennedy, OU Insider. For Coach Gundy, obviously preparing for a defense like LSU is a very difficult test, but what specifically do you see that stands out to you as prepare for Dave Aranda's scheme and, of course, the front seven and secondary combination that they bring to the table? Well, they're balanced across, um, you know, in the front and in the back. <clears throat> got a lot of speed, <clears throat> physical up front. Got a lot of athletes. Um, they can bring in many multiple linebackers. Um, you know, they've, they've really played well the last few weeks, especially the last few games. <clears throat> Georgia's and the Arkansas's and, and then seem to really get settled in what they want to do schematically. Um, so it'll be, a, it'll be a good game, good challenge for us on Saturday. We'll be ready for it. All right, next question. All right, staying back in the back. Matt Trent, ABC Baton Rouge. Uh, Jalen, how much stock do you personally put in uh, your recent or your past success against LSU while you were at Alabama? Well, I said this when I first came to Oklahoma. I said um, no pass, no touchdown, no win while I was at the University of Alabama will help us win games here. All right, let's go to Marty. Marty Smith, ESPN. Good morning, gentlemen. Uh, Jalen, you've had some moments in Mercedes-Benz Stadium, good and bad. What is that place to you? In what ways does, in, in, where does that place sit in terms of your college football memories? And what is your hope for making a new one on Saturday night? Yeah, I think it's, um, I think all good experiences, good experiences, um, you know, opportunities for me to learn, um, some, some great moments in that stadium, and it's just great to be back in there. Um, have an opportunity to play with this team, these guys up here, and, and going out there and making another a special, another special night. Over here on the ref. Jalen, obviously the two quarterbacks in this game are going to get a lot of attention. Did you have a chance to interact with Joe at all in New York City, get to know him at, at any point? And um, your motivation, some people might say he's the runner-up, he wants to prove something in this game, or are you just always motivated? Yeah, um, I guess he just made that decision for me as far as my motivation. My motivation is, is to go out there and do something special with these guys and, and take advantage of this great opportunity that we have together. So, All right, back in the back again. Uh, Colin Kennedy, you insider for Creed. Obviously, this offensive line has become a very solid unit, but it's faced its fair share of adversity. R.J. Proctor coming in late in the season, Adrian battling some things, and obviously guys like Tyrese and Marquise starting for the first time this year. How proud are you to reach the college football playoff with this unit, and in what ways have they kind of become somewhat similar to the unit that you were a part of a season ago? 
Yeah, you know, it's uh, really exciting to see those guys grow throughout the season. You know, uh, I'm really proud of what they've accomplished this year for sure. And uh, it's, it's great to be part of that line. You know, uh, as far as reaching the college football playoff, you know, that's one of our goals every season. So, you know, that's just that's just was one of our goals. You know, it wasn't too, you know, much of a surprise for us, you know. So, well, we we're excited about it for sure. But, uh, you know, I'm just really proud of the guys that have stepped up. Next question, raise your hand. All right, staying back in the back left. Uh, CD, how dynamic is this LSU secondary compared to some of the other ones that you faced this season? Um, the boys are very physical. Uh, they call themselves DBU for a reason, so I can't wait to see um, on Saturday. Next question. All right, over here on the far right, row two. Uh, Amos Morale with WWL Radio. Uh, Jalen, <clears throat> I'm curious, uh, you know, I know obviously you're preparing for LSU's defense, but have you watched much of Joe this season, and uh, what have you thought of the way uh, Joe Burrows played? Yeah, I have a lot of respect for him. He's done a great job in what they do. He's been very efficient. Um, he's executed very well, so I salute him. Back up here on the left side. Go ahead, Marty. <laughs> uh, Coach and CD, how would you guys compare what Jalen's done this season to the previous? Y'all got me choked up. To the previous uh, couple quarterbacks who have done quite well. He's <clears throat> Jalen's led this team, and this offense has been a great leader for us. Um, he's. Um, been a part of a lot of a lot of success this year for our football team. Another conference championship. Uh, there's still more that's left out there to accomplish. Um, we've been fortunate here to, under Coach Riley to have uh, great quarterbacks every season, and um, Jalen has um, taken on his own to do what he needed to do to lead this team as a quarterback, and he's done a great job. Kind of going off what Coach Gundy said. Uh, yeah, he's done a great job here. Uh, especially coming in January and the spring uh, with a lot on his plate. And uh, obviously it wasn't enough for him. So he came in, did his thing, um, and here we are in the playoffs. All right, right here in the front, Scott. Scott Rappelay with the Baton Rouge Advocate for Creed. Um, you guys are the only team in the playoff w with a loss, but, but, in, but also in a sense you guys have been tested in, in, in ways that maybe the other teams haven't been. How, how has the adversity you all have faced this year how can it help you in a playoff situation now that the games just get bigger and bigger? Uh, yeah, you know, just uh, throughout the season we've had, you know, some adversity for sure. I think just uh, really it just prepares us to be in any type of game that we're in, that we find ourselves in. So, uh, you know, I think it's, it's a good thing we've faced adversity so far. So uh, nothing's really going to surprise us. That's good. All right, next question. All right, all the way back in the back again. Uh, for CD. Charleston Rambo uh, in the cultural playoff a year ago was really when he took the stage against Alabama. And then for Jaden Hazelwood coming back to the state of Georgia, kind of returning home, I'm sure both of those guys are very excited to take this stage and maybe an increased role offensively. What's the sense you get from those two guys as they head into this football game, and what are you doing to lead them into this uh, matchup with LSU? There's only so much I can say. Uh, at the end of the day, them boys are going to have to go out there and play. Uh, and I'm very confident in them. And like you said, Charleston Rambo, he kind of, a year ago, he kind of put himself out there. And uh, I can't wait to see what he's going to do this year. And um, as for Jaden, he's been growing up throughout the season as a freshman. And um, at this point, he's not really considered a freshman anymore. So he's going to have to play his best ball. All right, back to Marty. Jalen, after y'all beat Houston in the season opener, I asked you after the game on the field how you would define this journey and use the word unprecedented. Now, all these games later, how would you define this story right now to someone who didn't know it? I use the same word, um, unprecedented. I'm <clears throat> very consistent with it because that's what it is. Um, and, you know, it's, it's been very easy for people to make this about me or try to make it about me, but um, none of this is done by one person, um, a lone soldier. These guys next to me, all the coaches, all the players, they contribute to everything and, and all of our success. So 
um, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna ride together and we're gonna we're gonna work and we're gonna prepare for for what's up up next. All right, next question. All right, while they're thinking, Coach, uh, I'll ask you, uh, LSU's defensive backfield's coming off a game where they held Georgia to 225 yards, had a couple of picks. How do you evaluate that unit, and what challenges do they present in your passing game? Well, again, like I mentioned earlier, they're, <clears throat> they've got a lot of speeds. They're very athletic. Um, they, they do a great job in, in man coverage. <clears throat> a lot of that has to do with, you know, the success that they have up front, um, you know, getting to the quarterback. Uh, their blitz package, they do a great job with that. So it'll be a challenge for us. We're looking forward to it. All right. All right. Any other questions? All right, we're going to go here on the left side, fourth row. Uh, Jalen, how would you compare your journey to Joe Burrow's journey? Just, you know, two transfers looking, looking to find a team. You take, take me through, how would you compare those two? Um, yeah, I think to each their own, and everybody has a, uh, a bit of uniqueness in their own journey. Um, and, you know, it's hard to compare certain things, but I'm happy, I'm happy he's doing well. And here we are. All right, where are we going next, guys? All right, back to, back to Marty. Here we go. Sorry, I feel like it's my press conference. Um, guys, I interviewed Lincoln yesterday, and he said to me that you guys have an edge about you coming into this game. Uh, Jalen, I'll ask you, what is that edge? What's it stem from? Um, it stems from the, I guess, the goals, the, the standard we set for ourselves. Um, early on, we, we set out things that we wanted to accomplish. Um, there's no need to sit here and talk about what we want to do. We got to go do it. And I think we've worked really hard all year. We've overcome, overcome a lot. We've learned a lot about ourselves as a team, grown together as, uh, as one. So we got a great opportunity to, to do something great and, and learn and use all of those experiences to, to our advantage. So we got an opportunity to do it. So I can't wait for it. All right, over here on the left, fourth row. Hey, Jalen, what do you remember about that 2016 game at LSU? It was 10 nothing. You had that long touchdown run. Can you kind of take, take, take me back to your memories on that one? What, you, what, what do you want me to tell you? Winning, winning the game. Yeah, won the game. All right, over here on the far right, third row. Jalen, can you speak to your defense and how good they are? Sometimes the Big 12 gets labeled for, for shootouts and whatnot, but it looks like your defense in some big games has held some people down. Just Yeah, I think um, – I think our defense is playing really well. Um, Coach Grinch has done a great job just going against them in practice every day. It gets very competitive. Um, just executing the scheme, being disciplined in what they do. I mean, it's, it's, been, it's been fun to watch. All right. Other questions? We've got time for a few more. All right, we're going to go all the way in the back left. Yeah, for Coach. Uh, Coach Aranda came in here and doubled down on uh, Mike Gunny's theory that you guys are playing basically a triple option style offense in the spread. He's excited to see the variation of plays and trickeration that you guys put on in the field. Is it fun or interesting for you to see a lot of different coaches and teams essentially portraying you as a triple option team? What's your viewpoint on that as more teams take on that mentality? I can't, I, I can't hear him. I, I, I didn't hear you good enough. I'm sorry. Can you hear me now? Yeah, there you go. Okay. Uh, Coach Aranda was in here and essentially doubled down on Mike's theory that you guys are playing a triple option style offense in the spread. What is your viewpoint on various coaches and teams continuing to emphasize the fact that in their minds you guys are a triple option attack in the spread offense? I think it's just another way to, to um, you know, look at these offenses and, and you, you see a lot of players on the field um, that are great athletes and just trying to use from sideline to sideline and just different ways you can get the, the ball into different players' hands. Uh, I believe I would venture to say that almost, you know, more than half of the teams across the country are doing the exact same thing. It's just the style of football that we're playing today. And um, 
with the, the great young athletes that are coming up out of the high school ranks in, in football and, and the better skill players, it just makes it um, it's, a, it's an exciting time in, in college football to be, be, be on the offensive side. Let's get a microphone here, far left on the front row, please. Hey, Coach Gundy. Um, you've been here, been around the program for 30 plus years. Uh, as a player, as a coach, what does the program mean to you? Obviously, it means a lot, but can you kind of put into words what the program means to you as a, as a coach, as a person, uh, what it's done for your life and all that kind of stuff? Well, first, I've been there 26, so I don't want to. I don't want to go down to 30. I'm not there yet, but I'm. I've been. I've been very fortunate and blessed. I've had the opportunity to be around a lot of, a lot of great players, a lot of All Americans, National Award winners, All Conference winners, uh, a lot of great assistant coaches, coordinators, coordinators that's gone on to be head coaches. Uh, th this is one of the the special college football programs in America. There's no doubt about it, and. Um, being now, you know, my year 21 as an assistant, it's, it's you know, I, I go back to the word consistency. And this is something this program has, has been about. And um, I, I think that <clears throat> what, this, what, what the University of Oklahoma has continued to do year in and year out, uh, chasing for titles, um, you know, producing a lot of great players on the football field has been, um, it's been really, really great to be a part of. All right, we got time for a couple more. Who's next? All right, let's go all the way in the back, left again. For Coach, uh, Lincoln was asked earlier in this process one word to describe the mentality of the team. I believe he said the word was hunger. And then later on, he also was asked essentially describe the state of the fan base for Oklahoma, and he kind of went on that same note saying that they're hungry for more, they're hungry for a national title. Do you feel like hunger... Do you feel that hunger in this program? And do you feel that like these players exhibit kind of a want and a, a true passion for the pursuit of a national title this year? Who would you say said that? Coach Riley. Yeah, no, I, this, this is the University of Oklahoma. I mean, this Oklahoma is about winning and pursuing championships. So, I mean, every year it's, that's it's what everybody wants. Everybody wants to win championships. Uh, players, coaches, students, fans. Um, alumni, <clears throat> again, Oklahoma's about pursuing and, and chasing championships. And, and um, yes, I, I think there's no doubt that there's, there's hunger, but there's hunger every year, every time we step out on that field. All right, next question. Last chance. All right, thank you, gentlemen. Oh, I'm sorry, did, did I miss one? Yeah, you had one right there. Where are we going, Scott? Scott Rapley with the Advocate again. Jalen, we've all seen that video of you kind of celebrating in the stands early in the season with, with, with the, the fans. How, how do you feel you've been accepted at Oklahoma? And what did, what did you try to do or what have you tried to exhibit to, to, to make people accept you as a player just, who's just here for one year? Yeah, I think that's – it's all unique when you look at it that way and um, talk about having true – fans and true support from two of the best universities in college football history. Um, it's special. Uh, I think that's another way it's unprecedented and I, I appreciate it all. Um, you know, more importantly, my teammates have welcomed me, um, embraced me, um, put me at the, on this pedestal and allowed me uh, to do these things for them and, and, and contribute to the team. So I'm appreciative of, of, of everything.